Compared to movies, books, TV, and just about every other form of entertainment on the planet, games require the biggest time investment by a significant margin. Because players spend so much time within these virtual worlds and therefore usually care a great deal about them, it's no surprise that video game fan theories are commonplace. Just about every gaming series in existence has plenty of popular theories accompanying it, and sometimes these are even confirmed by the game's creators. In some cases, these theories are just throwaway bits of fun, but in others they may completely flip your gaming universes on their heads. My name is Rach and welcome back to What Culture Gaming. These are seven video game fan theories confirmed by the creators. Seven. Commandant Steel is a siren. Borderlands. Antagonist of the first Borderlands game, Commandant Steel is nowhere near as memorable as Borderlands 2's handsome Jack, but she still proved an effective foil during the many hours players would spend traversing Pandora's rich open world. The game didn't dive too deep into the character's past and origins, but looks-wise, Steel bore a striking resemblance to Hero Lilith, one of the classes that you could select as your playable character. As such, this sparked debate that the two characters were connected somehow, and fans began to theorise that Steel, like Lilith, was a siren, a woman with powerful mystical abilities. It seemed like a safe bet, you know, the tattoos, the eye shape, the skin tone shared by the two characters are obvious parallels and it was hinted at in the game, but for the longest time the matter was never officially addressed. That is, until years later when Gearbox CEO Randy Pitchford responded to a fan on Twitter with a simple line, I consider her to be a siren, confirming the theory and putting any remaining doubts to rest. 6. The characters are just toys. Smash Bros. The Smash games were clearly never meant to be taken seriously from a story and a lore perspective. The whole point is for players to enjoy their favourite gaming characters being mashed together without thinking too hard on the rules and plots of the fighters' separate universes. But where there's a huge fan base, there's rigorous dissection, fun of discussion and, of course, lots and lots of fan theories and Smash is no different. One of the most popular theories is that within each of the Smash games, the characters you play as are just children's toys, all controlled by an imaginative kid. Think like in the Lego movie. It sounds odd, but there's actually evidence to support this, such as boss battles against the giant white master hand, which is clearly a human hand. Eventually, Nintendo legend Satoru Iwata confirmed that the characters are toys in an interview, stating that the games do not represent the Nintendo characters fighting against one another, and mentioning that the team hotly debated this topic during development. So no, it's not okay for Mario to be hitting Pikachu, but hitting a Pikachu effigy? Alright. 5. Symmetra has autism. Overwatch. Overwatch is a game where people of all ages, genders, race, orientation or background can look at a screen and portray characters that they can relate to. The multiplayer juggernaut offered up a heartwarming example of this in early 2017, with a long rumoured fan theory being confirmed in the process. The theory that character Symmetra was in fact autistic stemmed from an official Overwatch digital comic titled A Better World. In it, Symmetra is front and centre, and during the story she states that she's always been seen as different. This, along with mentions of the spectrum, led fans to the natural conclusion, but it was never officially acknowledged by Blizzard until a year later. Overwatch director Jeffrey Kaplan confirmed in a reply to a fan mail that Symmetra does in fact have autism, confirming the theory outright. She's a character that I personally adore playing as, and it's really great to see this kind of neurodiversity represented in such a massively popular game. 4. It's all just a play. Super Mario Bros. 3 Super Mario Bros. 3 begins with a curtain rising to reveal the title card underneath. Surrounding the card are objects floating in the air as though hung there purposefully. During the game, coloured blocks have been bolted to the back wall and there are clearly visible platforms hanging from the roof. It all feels a little makeshift and odd, and for the longest time, fans thought that these design quirks made the entire game feel like an amateur theatre production or even a school play, a theory that players quickly started to adopt as fact. And, well, it is. 
the legendary Shigeru Miyamoto, creator of Mario, Zelda, Star Fox, basically your whole childhood, confirmed this in a funny video on the Nintendo UK YouTube channel, the purpose of which was for the creator to refute or embrace Mario-centric myths. When asked about one such myth, was Super Mario Bros. 3 all just a performance? He pauses before giving a confident nod of approval. 3. How Pharaoh Got Omega Clearance Horizon Zero Dawn Horizon's original open world was rich and impeccably detailed and it's no surprise that fans had tons of questions and theories to answer them. One such theory revolved around the character Ted Farrow of Farrow Automated Solutions, the organization responsible for the creation of the machines and the subsequent fall of civilization. In the game, it's revealed that Farrow possesses security level Omega, which grants him access to Project Zero Dawn. Omega Level not only superseded the authority of the project's creator and the entirety of her team, but none of them even had any idea that it even existed. We're never told how Pharaoh acquired it, he just has it. A popular theory among fans was that either Gaia, an AI system managing Zero Dawn, or Pharaoh's own engineers created Omega Clearance to give him secret high-level access to Project Zero Dawn. Eventually, this theory was addressed by the game's writer in a Reddit AMA. Ted had his engineers create Omega Clearance for him as a secret back door to Project Zero Dawn. Horizon Zero Dawn is still a pretty easy game to understand, even without this little nugget of information, but it's still awesome to see developers addressing even the smallest details that fans have questions about. 2. The universe is populated by… egg people? Rocket League like Disney Pixar's Cars franchise, the Rocket League universe is also hiding a curious secret regarding the nature of its self-aware, seemingly driverless automobiles. Ever since the game launched in 2015, the stands surrounding the pitch have been populated by weird, egg-shaped objects which many players assumed were simply a way for the developer to add easily rendered atmosphere to the matches. But a pocket of the fanbase got overly egg-sighted, frying up a theory of their own and claiming that the world of Rocket League was actually controlled by an advanced race of egg-shaped beings. But Psyonix never formally acknowledged this idea, so it wasn't known if the whole thing was real or just a silly fan construct. That is, until the developer posted on their website a shot of the environment surrounding the new Farmstead Arena, where a billboard packed full of eggy characters can be seen mounted on top of a barn. A clear indication by Psyonix that the egg theory is true. Why else would they go out of their way to design a billboard that players will never see and then use said billboard as one of the select few images that show off the farmstead map? The billboard text reads Mitchell and the gang live at cellar door, meaning that the mighty egg overlords are so evolved that they are somehow capable of playing music. Good God! 1. Mario and Yoshi's Relationship Super Mario World for the longest time, there was a debate amongst Mario fans that revolved around the nature of the plumber's relationship with Yoshi. Specifically, one half of the franchise thought that in SNES classic Super Mario World, Mario was simply pointing ahead while he rode the dinosaur's back, while the other half theorized that he was actually punching him in the head to get him to move. The primitive graphics make it quite hard to tell. This went back and forth for well over two decades until finally in 2017 when the developers talked about how the lovable green punching bag originally came to be. When they were making Super Mario Bros. 3, Miyamoto drew a picture of Mario riding a horse. So when they were making Super Mario World and designed a dinosaur land, the concept sort of went from there. They went on to explain, Lots of people think that while Mario is pointing his finger forward, he's saying go and Yoshi's tongue comes out. However, the setup that they drew was that when Mario punches Yoshi in the head, the character's tongue shoots out in surprise. Looking at the box art now, Mario does look to have his fist primed in quite an aggressive manner. Turns out the answer was right under our noses, all along.